Welcome to Bounce Back Mondays with Dr. B. Y'all come on in the room. I know y'all waiting. I just saw this slide you didn't share like 200 times already. <laughs> y'all invited your family. Come on in. Come on in and go listen to some um, Marvin Sapp. Yes, you can. While y'all come in, got guests, two guests in the studios. Got another one coming. It's a hot topic, y'all. Come on in, share the video, invite your friends and family. You can go to your page and see. You go, go to my page and try to share the video. You see it? Yeah. So I listen, make sure we are clear. And I also look to make sure we look good. <laughs> All right. You can go ahead and start talking to your followers and tell them come on in and share the video. Yeah, we got Rick Wallace in here, Dr. Rick Wallace in the studio. Welcome to his his listeners and his viewers and his Facebook family. Hey everybody, uh, let's talk. We got something real serious uh, that we need to get some attention to. Uh, we have a platform here where we can talk, we can share, we can come up with solutions. Uh, I'm excited because I've got my ace with me. My wife is sitting over here to my left. Uh, she holds me down. Uh, we hold each other down. And she has some experience and uh, interest in this topic as well. Uh, you know, so we're going to share a lot of that. But if you've been supporting me, this is the time to come in, share the link, invite people in, do watch parties, get it hyped, get it going on. Because we're going to talk about it. We're going to bring it. We're coming real. I know Michael Jordan. I know you're out there somewhere. Uh, get them, get them ready, man. Get my boy Clarice on and get him in too, because he said he wanted to really check this out. Who? So, Clarice Brown. Okay. Yeah. So uh, all you guys, man. Uh, and uh, for those of you guys who are going to catch on this, in, fam. those of you who are going to catch this later uh, on YouTube, uh, you know how we do it. Uh, we're rebuilding. We're still fighting to get the old channel back, uh, but we're not going to stop. Uh, we're not stopping. We're going to keep going. So I'm excited to have you guys come out. Uh, I want to thank Bridget, uh, former schoolmate. Yes. We go way back 30 something years. Forrest Brook Jack was in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Short story, Bridget's older brother, John, was like, I, I'm, people know me, know I don't have heroes. <laughs> John was like this larger than life cat, and he was just so cool. He played the game the way the game should be played, even at that level, and he was just so cool with it. So, uh, like I said, we go way back. We had that Forest Brook Jack on yes. fire. That, back when being from the North Side was actually something to be proud of. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, I'm excited about this. So, welcome everybody, all of uh, the people who follow Bridget on a regular, regular time. I'm going to give you everything I have. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, you get to know a little bit more about when we go. But what I'm telling you is, my ace is sitting over to the left. She's quiet and subdued, but she's powerful. And that that's what makes her her. She, she doesn't like the line like we forced her in this chair. She was <laughs> yes, trying to slide over to she the side. I would never happen. But, uh, but we got her here. So while she's here, uh, she's going to sit in the chair until uh, the next guest shows up and share her insight. And I'm pretty sure she's going to drop some powerful gems because we talk about this pretty often. That's good. Thank you so much, Dr. Wallace. So uh, welcome, Antoinette, Brenda. Hey, Irene. Uh, hey, Rosie. Thank you all for supporting. Um, thank you all for coming on to the live. Hey, Felicia. Um, hey, Zevonique. How you doing, hon? Um, I need to call you. I'm going to call you tomorrow. Uh, thank you for joining. Everybody share the video because this is a very important topic. Um, we need to really, 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 really talk about um, sex trafficking. I'm going to go ahead and bring in... Um, 
our Gospel Radio Nation family. Um, they sent me, I got a couple of text messages like, where you at? It's just like two minutes after, like, calm down. Don't tell them I said that. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Hold on. I'm going to go ahead and bring them, bring them in. Turn down the music. I got some feedback. Let's see. All right. All right. So we are live on gospelradionation.com and you are listening to Bounce Back Mondays with Dr. B. It is, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, today is December 9th, 2019, and today's topic is sex trafficking. I know, I know, I know. I know you heard so much about this topic. It's all over the news. It's all over our Facebook feeds. Every day I see some new uh, gimmick. They putting ties on your fence, ties on your car. They uh, putting stuff on your window and you smell it or you get it on your hands and it, it uh, makes you pass out. Um, I know we're seeing a lot of stuff and I had an idea to do a show because um, I was speaking to a young lady. She reached out for me to me after I spoke at a women's conference a couple of months ago. And um, she said she was in trouble. And so um, I'm like, what kind of trouble? And she told me what it was. So in a long story short, she's being sex trafficked. And so I made some phone calls, got us some help. I, I don't know where she is now. I, I pray for her every day. I, but I do know she's safe. I do know that. Um, there are safe homes all around Houston, in and out of Houston, um, for people to be if they need outside of Houston, out of town. They'll take you out of town if they have to. So there are some, there are some resources. And so um, the Lord put it on my heart, hey, you need to talk to the community about this. You need to talk to your friends. You need to bring awareness. And I reached out to some people. Um, that I knew had some experience. I knew somebody that had experience. My my best friend, um, Antoinette, she gave me a connection, Nisi Hamilton. Nisi is um, doing an event with the Houston Texans right now, and she should be here by 6 o'clock. So she'll come in at the second half of the show. And then I thought about, you know, women, we can talk about it, but I know this powerful man of God that has a voice. Right here, he got boots on the ground. And I say, let me reach out to him because I wanted him to come and bring his insight. And those of, the, those of you that don't know Dr. Rick Wallace, he's a, a Forest Book Jaguar. He's an alumni of North Forest ISD. Right. And um, we've been friends for over 30 years. And if you don't know him, after today, I promise you, your life is going to be changed. Whatever topic it is, he's not he's not one of those timid men. He's a man. What I what my little phrase is now, he a man man. <laughs> because no topic is off limits to him. And he's always very open and honest. And he's also like me. Um he has his you have a PhD, right? right. In what? Uh, I have a PhD in uh theology, theology and I have a doctorate in psychology. So he 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 go. He he got it going on. He, he, like me, he brings facts. I'm not, we're not talking about just stuff we heard. Yeah. We have facts to bag this up to let you know that um, what the information that we're given is quality. So without further ado, nope, let me pray us in. Okay. okay? Sounds good. Um, everybody take a deep breath. Remember what I always say. If you're driving, just drive. Keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> I'm going to pray. You just listen and pray with a heart of agreement. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for last night's lying down and this morning's rising up. Thank you, Father God, for keeping us another day. God, thank you for breath in our body, Lord God. Thank you for our health and strength. Thank you for this life, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, that we weren't just born. We are all created with a purpose, Lord God. And thank you, Father God, that we are walking in our purpose, Lord God. 
Father God, I thank you for this show, Bounce Back Money with Dr. B. God, I thank you for this platform so that we can bring information to the people, Father God, that could affect their lives and help change their lives for the better. God, I ask that you bless this show today. Let every ear hear. Let this video be shared thousands of times, Lord God. Let it get all over the world. Let it touch someone, even some uh, sex traffic victim, even some sex trafficker. Let it change their heart, Lord God. Lord, let this information be a blessing to our listeners and let this work it all around the world, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, that we speak with clarity. Thank you, Father God, that we are speaking where people can understand us. Thank you, Father God, that we have the necessary resources that they need. And if we don't, Father God, I ask that you send somebody our way so that we can help somebody. And, oh, God, I thank you for this opportunity again to bless your people. This I ask in your name. Amen. Okay. So today we're talking about sex trafficking. And I got Dr. Wallace here. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace. Uh, I guess here I'll identify myself with the uh, Odyssey Project, with, which is a full service uh, inner city community outreach uh organization we have the black men lead right of passage program um, my wife heads the restoring ghettos forgotten daughters outreach program we deal with young at-risk uh, girls uh, she does an exceptional job in that and she'll kind of weigh in on uh, where she is with that and what she does um, our goal is real simple uh, obviously I'm a business mentor and a lot of people know me because a lot of the content I put out has to do with my businesses with uh, uh, psychological uh, consultations, uh, life coaching, life strategy, all of that. Uh, and, you know, that's good. You know, if it comes up later on in the conversation, we'll talk about it. But uh, where I am most passionate and where I'm most alive is in a situation in which I'm dealing with people that most people don't see. Okay. Most people never hear. Most people are never aware of what they're going through. The people who are voiceless and behind the scenes in the communities where there are only statistics and numbers. Mm -hmm. I give a name mm -hmm. and a face. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and my goal is to uh, provide hope and uh, insight and uh, perspective and expectation and anticipation into a future. And that comes in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Too many to sit down and talk about now because this really isn't about me. Uh, but as as we move forward, I'll share in the in the content and context of the dialogue uh, what it is I do and why I'm able to sit here and talk about this. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on the show, and thank you for sitting in and supporting your husband. <laughs> Don't you so know you're going to get some questions? Going to come at you. I know. Be ready. <laughs> So, so, you know, um, on Dr. B, we always um, define, you know, give you some definitions, give you some statistics, uh, kind of let you know how this thing is affecting us as a people and here in America. It's really, really bad. And uh, doing my research, I literally cried because this is, this is really a lot, okay? So sex trafficking is defined as the action or the practice of illegally transporting people from one country or an area to another, typically for the purpose of forced labor or sexual exploitation. So we, we see it, you know, they, girls are being taken and being sold into as sex slaves or uh, like we used to say, being pimped um, or it could even be workers like undocumented workers working for people being pretty much slaves uh, being um, working laborers without getting any pay. Right. That's being a slave. Okay. Right. So it could be on either or. So let's just talk about some of the statistics. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the statistics are crazy. I mean, be ready for this because you're not going to believe this. Okay. So in 2019, the State Department of uh, Health and Criminal Justice found that the top three nations 
for sex trafficking is the United States, Mexico, and the Philippines. Philippines, yep. Now, I, I, I know I've, I've seen a lot going on in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I remember when I first became a nurse, they used to go over there and get bus loads of nurses and bring them back here to work. Mm -hmm. They'll give them some schooling, bring them back in here and work. So I knew that a lot of people come from the Philippines for this almighty American dollar. You know, they want to come over here and make a better living for their families, send the money back over because I Apparently, our, the U.S. dollar is worth a lot over there. and worth nothing over here, but it's yeah. worth a lot over there. And so the United States, Mexico, and the Philippines are the top three countries, okay? They also report, and this is it, y'all, the top three states with the most human trafficking is California, Texas, Texas Florida. And Florida. It was New York, but I just saw today that it's Florida now. Florida overtook New York. Yes. yes. So look, California, Texas number two, y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's break this down just a little bit further. Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> um, oh, and let's mention this Vegas is hot on our trails. On hot on Florida and New York's trail. Because of the culture. Because of the homeless culture. Situation. Yeah, the homelessness. Because of the party. You know, yeah. Sin City, y'all. You know, the yeah. They're they, they bringing them uh, girls and boys yeah. over there uh, for entertainment purposes, is what they said. Okay. okay. And I got some more statistics. Y'all going to be like, oh, really? Well, we supporting some of this stuff and don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know. Texas is a big hub for this. So let's, let's just talk. Dr. Wallace, why do you think California and Texas are like right there at the top? Let me see what you think. I mean, uh, first of all, you have to look at this for what it is. It's an economic stimulus. It's simply another way of underground working. It has transplanted dope trafficking mm -hmm. as the number two mechanism of income globally. Yes. So it's a business. Okay. And the reason that California and Texas are uh, at the top of the list is because of their economies, their mobility, and their direct access to Mexico. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. They're Mexican, they're Mexico, y'all. So. See, the reason you got two states in between Texas. Right. And California, you got New Mexico, New Mexico and, Arizona. and Arizona. The reason they are not as hot is because they don't have the population and the economy to immediately plug those people that they are stealing and bringing over or tricking and bringing over into the country. California immediately, you move in, it's a bunch of people that can be plugged into sweatshops, yes. plugged into massage, massage parlors. <laughs> the illicit massage parlor business is huge. Yeah. So that's the reason that you got that right there. That's it. So let's look at, let me go back to this question because I, I just don't. What, I mean, who is at most risk for being trafficked? Females. Females, of course, yes. Young, and the the younger, younger, the younger, the younger, better. Yes, the younger, the better. So I, I was looking at, I was like, well, I ain't got no risk to being uh, snagged. They don't want my old behind. I'm 50 because when I looked at those numbers, I was like, what? Yeah. So let's look at the average age uh, of a girl that's being sex trafficked. Let me see. I had the statistic. Uh, the age was. Yeah, it was it was it was under 12. I think it was. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I know at one point it was nine. Nine. Sure. That's yeah. it. Nine. Yeah. Nine years old. Nine years old. So our babies are very, very vulnerable. Um, they're naive to what's going on around. So our parents need to keep an eye on their children. They're vulnerable. Somebody offering them some candy or a puppy or something like that. Some of the stuff they be doing in these movies, that's really happening. Often got a box of puppies to lure a little child over there. They, they're victims that are as young as uh, 
two years old. Yeah. For sex trafficking, y'all. Well, the, the, at, at that age, another element that a lot of people aren't aware of that when you start to study the evolution of sex trafficking, mm -hmm. because it's becoming such a global... We, we, here's what you have to understand, first and foremost. We live in a world where we've been given the illusion of ethics, mm -hmm. morality, and, you know, we really think, you know, well, nothing like that will happen in, in America because America has told us that she doesn't do that. But we also know that America was directly responsible for the crack epidemic. Yes. And yes. it's directly involved, and she won't admit it right now, in the heroin uh, yes. epidemic. Yes. And definitely has her hands in the arm shipping, which is the number Absolutely. one business. And Absolutely. so why wouldn't she be involved in benefiting from this? Yes. And so what you have to understand is, first and foremost, that these babies are simply a commodity now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. we have to understand that this country is very capable of allowing this to happen because yes. it has to sustain cash flow and economics by any means necessary. And it's proven that it can do it. Uh, and then on the other note, what you have to look at and say is you have these children at this age because of the economy. The economy is like any other business. It's yes. evolving. If you look at businesses, they're tech evolving. If you look at you yes. know, Fortune 500 companies now, they've adjusted to uh, social media yes. and, and digital, digital, media. digital media. And now... What you, they, they used to have an 85-15 when social media first came in. 85% oh, no. of their spend was going towards television and radio. Yeah. Now 85% of their spend is going towards uh, social, social media, media because that's where everything is. Yeah, Decisions good. are being made. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so then what you have to understand is what they understand now. That babies that are either born into or kidnapped at a very early age are easier to control. Yes. More docile, yes. more controllable, and they can be taught into an uh, uh, norm and standard, which is how you judge yes. whether something is right or wrong. Right. They, can be, that's they can be conditioned into yeah. the normalization of it to where they're never even bucketed. They're not looking right. to get away. Yeah. And so they're literally starting to raise sex slaves now. Yeah. And so that's why you got a two-year-old being kidnapped because their, their whole life, all they're going to ever know yeah. is, that, is this is what, their this that's what right. it is. Right. They don't know nothing different. Nothing. So there are more than 4 million victims of sex trafficking globally. Okay. So, and we already said 99% of them are women and girls. Okay. One in seven reported runaways, runaways in the United States are more likely to be victims of child sex trafficking. So you think these kids running away from home, but they're not. They have been taken. And what I what I saw when I was doing my research, they're taken and they're generally not kept in the same area. So they they get taken to like say for instance, get taken here in North Houston, and they end up in California. Right. So how who do they who do they reach out to for help? They can't call nobody because they in a foreign no, no. place. They don't know what they are. They found a four year old in Dallas. Uh, I want to say was it Dallas or was it Amarillo? Amarillo. Okay. Uh, about three months ago, four year old. They raided. Uh, uh, a small organization that was sex trafficking. This four-year-old was from Virginia. What? They they got her all the way in text. They found her, and luckily they were able to find out who she belonged to, and they were able to get her back. And that four years old, we we're hoping that the resiliency of oh a four-year-old will be able to overcome the traumatic experience in that. So it's crazy. That is horrible. But that's that's what happened. So. You got somebody that running away, look, they look listed as a runaway. They probably they could have ran away, depending on what they had going on. When you hear the, the mother on TV, everything was good. They were doing well in school. Why would they run away? They probably didn't run away. They probably were snatched and they are a victim of sex trafficking. So and, and we have to look at that. Something that else that we have to have to look at, and this is the hard stuff that nobody wants to talk about because everybody wants to be political. Correct. Everybody wants to be talk about on the good, good side. Awesome. Uh, uh, is the fact that when it's a black child or when it's a have Hispanic child, it's automatically assumed that it's a runaway. Yeah. They don't get the same attention from law enforcement. Right. That a white child will get yeah. when they come up missing. 
And first of all, the white child is less of a threat. So it should automatically be assumed. And I mean, for instance, uh, a lot is happening outside of the scope of sex trafficking, period. But there are a lot of abductions, period. And for instance, the young girl down in Alabama who was off to school at Tuskegee and gets abducted, a couple sees it happen. And they don't say a word. The wife sits up and tells the husband, that's not our business. Leave it alone. Doesn't even call it in. At that moment, if you call it in with the license plate, yes, the yes. chance of the police finding it, because that's a violent abduction witnessed right. by someone, yes. is, is likely. That by the time they find this girl, she's been she's dead been for weeks. weeks. And, and so they caught her and, and killed her. But, and so you can see the same thing happening in sex. Right? Yes. When parents say, my daughter's missing, they automatically assume. And, oh, and, and I think right. that yeah. we've got to lobby, we've got to lobby on, the, on the state uh, and, and federal level to change laws for missing people. Yes. Now, I can see for an adult yeah. giving a 24-hour yeah. window before you can file a Because we might just be hanging out somewhere, you know, you know, you know but you don't know. You know, you know, got caught up with the side chick and spent yeah. a little too much time. Yeah. Now you're scared to come home. Yeah, you're so you're you trying to figure scared. it out. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we're gonna give you 24 hours to figure that out before right. we actually start looking. But you know, when you talk man. about anybody under the age of 18 yes. that hasn't come home by 10 o'clock, we need to start looking for them. Yeah. And we don't, and, and that's another problem. Do you know how far they can get a kid by the time they actually yes. start looking for them? Yes. And so those are protocols, policies, uh, and just strategies and practices that don't work. When you're battling a machine, yes, and that's what it's become now. It's 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 business, and you have people who don't view human life as human life. Right. It's a commodity. It's a commodity. Now. You're a product. There was a woman, and I, I say this, and I'm done. And we talked about this. The woman that came on a couple of weeks ago, she's standing before a judge. She's been convicted of sex trafficking and trafficking kids, and the judge is waiting to sentence her. And he and the judge, she, she said, she, the judge asked her. Why did you do this? Her response was easy money. Easy money, and she got seven, seven years. years. Seven years? Yeah. Yes, seven years after saying easy money. What? They don't value our lives. Right. They don't value our lives. And then what's she gonna be out in three? Probably, Probably so. Oh my god, seven years. Yeah. You seven don't value years. life. But see, Something I've been saying to black men for a long time, and that's a part of what black men lead is about, is something I've been saying to them a long time is you can't say something is valuable. You have to show people yes, that it's right. valuable. And I told people a long time ago, you're still waiting on people who don't have a moral compass to display to morality. morality. <laughs> and that's <laughs> not why 90% of people in this country do what they do right. to stay out of trouble. They do what they do because they don't want to be with the consequence. That's right. You have to apply negative consequence mm -hmm. until we start as black men, and I'm speaking specifically right. to black men right now, until we start applying a consequence for harming black women right. and black children, it will continue. It will, it will continue unabated because nobody's afraid. Until you start making people afraid to harm our women and children, they will continue, they to, will do continue so. to do so, and, and, and they will do it without without fear. Without recourse, because they don't see they right. see nothing that's going to happen. Right. Wow. Let me give you another one, y'all. And y'all ain't ready. Hold on. Put your seat. Make sure your seatbelt on tight. If you're driving, if you're at home, sit down. Girls in foster care are particularly vulnerable to human trafficking. Wow. wow. When I, when I first learned that, and like I say, this is something I've been pushing. If you follow me on anything, yes. I've been pushing this heavy for a while because it, I saw it coming, becoming what it has become. And when I found out the role that uh, the foster care system has played in it, CPS yes. and the foster care system, mm -hmm. uh, it, the, the increase in risk is astronomical yes. uh, that our girls specifically, specifically. are at risk and that they can be being trafficked and nobody's aware of it. Now, here's the thing you have to understand, that sex trafficking is a reality that's taking place outside the scope of the normal idea of which you see somebody kidnapped and taken out. That happens. But I have literally met someone who was being trafficked while they were still at home. OK, we're going to talk about that. Hold that thought, because that right there mm -hmm. took my breath away. I'm not gonna lie. 
And when Nisi get here, I should have brought a box clean it. I'm just gonna take my shirt and be wiping my face <laughs> because that was that was crazy. Yeah, I, I I had no idea. Yep. Okay. So the foster care system, Lord have mercy, where kids are are taken from a home because they were in danger, or they were being abused, mistreated. Many cases accused. Accused. Of, parents accused of being abused. Not because they're they're chastising them. They okay. they sometimes even um I I whoop my kid. I I just I just had to sort support uh somebody who was about to lose their child because she whooped her daughter with a belt. And, and what she deserved, I was like, girl, yeah. she bring the boys through the window. And what is a mother supposed to do? Now, don't do that and go sit down. No, we need to have a hard conversation. And you is 13 years old, and I'm going to whoop your behind. Because there's a consequence. And I know a lot of people say, stop whooping your kids. I'm, I'm a proponent of talking to your children after they get a whooping. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not talking about beating. There's a difference. There's a whole lot of difference. You know, when you start getting extinction cards and, and bats and stuff like that, you are out of line. And I mean, you, I, she hit me three times with the belt on my butt. I, I don't have an issue with that at all. Okay. We're talking about a, a parent being a parent and you're losing your child. To the foster care system because you were trying to um, chastise them and direct them the right way. Okay, I stand on the on the scripture in the Bible. Stand a rod for a child. I believe in chastising my children. I do not believe in uh, beating them, abusing them. I think that's wrong. I also believe in talking to them and letting them have a voice in the house too, so you can know what's going on with your kids. I always tell my children, you can come talk to me about anything. Some of the stuff they brought to me, I wasn't ready. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad I did. You know, hey, yeah, you can, as long as you don't curse, and as long as you don't disrespect me, let's talk. And we've always, we have that line of communication. So foster homes, are you supposed to be taking a kid away from a home that is uh, uh, supposedly abusive, uh, or they're not being treated properly, they don't have, they're, being, they're not being taken care of because there's not enough food, uh, the lights being up there, neglected or whatever, brought into a system that makes them even more vulnerable to this sex trafficking. And we got a story that's gonna come, y'all. It's gonna, gonna knock you off the off your feet because that that was deep. I actually have an article that I was reading today regarding that, and I had to put it down several times because my heart sank because of the statistics. Um, let's talk about this. Uh. Almighty dollar, everything that you list, you listed. Guns, drugs, sex trafficking, all of these things. Oh, disease. We, we forgot to miss that, mention that one. But I'm a nurse. I'm gonna mention that one. Disease, got y'all some of these diseases, man made. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To make money. But you said to stimulate the economy economy. Listen to this. Profits from sexual labor are estimated to be 99 billion, billion 9, 000, not million, billion dollars. Oh my God. Think about how many industries don't have 99 right. billion dollars right. industries. Right. What you have to understand when you start talking about this is the catalyst for uh, economic and uh, Revenue, revenue flow and economic stimulus. Okay, you have three primary ways of earning a living and supporting your family mm -hmm. in life. Period. In life. I don't care who you are. Okay. And right. I don't care how sweet they talk it up. Okay. You have number one, you earn a living. Get a job. Now <laughs> that means you either have a job or you own a company. A business. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how you earn a living. Okay. The second way is through subsidies. Yes. Some kind of way, you're a former company, maybe you got hurt and somebody's taking care of you because they hurt you, uh, a company's taking care of you. Some sort of government subsidies, okay. whether it's uh, food stamps, housing, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, that's it. So the first one is you earn a living, the second one is you're subsidized by an entity, primarily the government. Okay. After that, it's crime. So if you don't have a job for whatever reason, and 
what you have to understand, there are historically groups that are underemployed and uh, unemployed. And that's by a certain uh, certain uh, structure and it's created and it's on purpose. Mm -hmm. But so you're going to have a certain group that is going to automatically be funneled towards criminal behavior. Right. So now what happens is I don't know anybody. Again, here's this moral myth that everything is based off of the moral and I never do it. I don't know anybody personally that will starve to death based on morality. Right. right. So at some point, if I can't go out and get it the way you're telling me I have to get it, and then you won't help me. Right. I'm gonna do what I can. What I gotta do. Okay. And if you squeeze one area, I'm gonna move to another area. Mm -hmm. And so right now, I'm finding out it's a whole lot less dangerous for me. It's a whole lot less costly for me to deal human life than it is to deal drugs. Wow. See, I get caught with an ounce. I can do 25 years. I get caught with a key. I can do life. Right. I can I can move some humans, get more money than get I can get, years. and get seven years. What do you think I'm going to do? I got to eat. I'm going to eat. Right. And then if I'm going to do something, this is how a lot of people think. If I'm going to do something that's going to jeopardize my freedom, I might as well go out loud. And then you cannot think from a psychological and sociological perspective that I can deal in human life as a commodity and not grow cold from it. So right. at some point, the life stops mattering, mattering to me. me. That's right. Yep. It becomes a number. When I see a little girl walking down the street, I don't see what I, they don't see what I see. Somebody when I see a little girl, I immediately, when I see a little kid bar a girl, I start thinking about the future. Yeah. Right. I start, when I look at my kids, every time my kid walks by me, I see their future. Right. And I see the potential in them. And I say, man, how am I going to help them? And when I see little kids that, that parents bring to me for whatever programs I have going on, I don't just see the kid. I, they bring me a troubled kid. Yes. All I see is potential. But if a person is dealing in life like this, they don't see potential. They, see they can't afford to see potential. They can't afford to see the soul existing in the person. Yes. All they can see is the number. So everything has a number associated with it. So it means nothing. The only thing they think when a, when a child dies or when a woman dies or a girl dies is I just lost a thousand dollars. I just lost however much they were going to get for. That's what they're looking at. Their bottom line. This is their product. I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm reading. I'm listening. I was reading today and I'm listening to you. The only thing that kept coming to my mind is slavery. It's a form of slavery. It's a form of slavery. You 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 sold black people for a dollar. You sold babies. You right. I'm, it's the same thing. So it's just a different kind. Sex trafficking. We know that we do now we do know. I'm about to type the wrong comment. Okay. <laughs> uh, we do know that we have people who are being trafficked for labor, but most of this trafficking is for sex. Right. And we know sex sales. We know we see sex everywhere. All on TV, all in magazines, it's all in the music, music that y'all listen to. It's everywhere. So sex is a money making industry. So we got we got a nine hundred no nine nine ninety nine billion dollar industry. And you said something earlier, Dr. Wallace, that the America, she gonna get her money. She need it, right? Right. So we you said we had um guns. Number one number one in the world. Guns. Um we got drugs. What else we got that we making money? Oh, I said disease. That's that's an industry nobody want to talk about. But yeah. since you brought it up, let's talk about it. <laughs> uh, actually, if they qualified it the right way, the medical industry would be the biggest hustle. Right. Globally. Globally. It's a five hundred billion dollar right. industry. Right. But see, it's legal. Right. Even though we know that we're not treating causality, no, we're, we're treating, treating symptoms. 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 Okay, so anybody that obsesses so as as a therapist, as a as, mm -hmm. as a counselor, my goal is not to change the symptoms. See, when you go to the DSM and you start looking at these clusters, Cause. clusters of symptoms, yes. and you're diagnosing. Number one is uh, 
until probably 20, 25, almost 30 years ago, uh, psych psychologists and psychiatrists were the only professionals that were expected to diagnose their patients without actually, actually looking at where the, <laughs> where the problem is coming from. Yes. Uh, Dr. Daniel A. Mann changed that when he started to do the scans right. uh, and started to see that a lot of the problems weren't simply a mental issue. It was a brain right. issue as well. Mm -hmm. And we understand that different parts of the brain control different behaviors, different impediments, uh, and, and different functions. Okay, so we understand that. Here's the thing that as long as we're treating symptoms, we're never curing, we're never right. healing. Right. We're only suppressing. And the suppressing of, of a harmonious situation, health isn't about physicality only. It's not about mentality right. only. It's not about spirituality only. It's not about emotional, uh, 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 being emotional only. It's the holistic principle. God designed us to be holistically together. Yes. So if I have a problem mentally, it impacts me physically. If I have a problem physically, it impacts me mentally, emotionally, and spiritually all the way across the board. Right. Well, the medical industry knows this. And it's not by accident that in the last three years, over 100 homeopathic uh, uh, and uh, naturopathic doctors have been murdered. You have you said, I've, I've really been following that. Yeah. Over a hundred in yep. one summer, fifty. Yep. One summer, what was that? Two thousand sixteen. Mm -hmm. One summer, fifty homeopathic doctors yes. were murdered, and nobody. I mean, it made the news, and some people. Who it went on real stuff, quick, and then, it was gone. Then it was gone. And what you're doing is you're messing with a five hundred billion dollar yes. industry, and we know people will disappear you you're when you start about messing you with that kind of money. A cure for something. That's making some money, Dr. Savy. Dr. Savy, and, and, and they got him. Yep. You know, I mean, he made it a long way because he stayed under the radar. He stayed under the radar. Yeah. But I really believe that Left Eye got killed because she put him on front. She the know. one brought him out. Nobody knew who he was. I believe so, too. But she started going down there when she was trying to turn her life around and she was having all of that. You know, she had a rage problem. Right. She's setting houses on fire and stuff. Yeah. She went down to him and he told her it was her diet. And that he got to change her diet and her temper changed. And all of a sudden, she started doing these videos before videos were popular. And she put him on Front Street. She ended up yes. dead one visit down there to see him. Just one, yep. So you got to understand what's going on. So when we talk about dirty, dirty money, she, the medical industry is at the top of the list. Yes. Especially Big Pharma. Big Pharma is making the money, doing it. They create disease for money. I was looking at um, Valtrex making $10 million a day. That's the drug to treat herpes. What was the hottest drug? Now, the drugs now, um, it's, uh, Valtrex is still on top, but um, some of the HIV drugs are starting to take on. So it's it's amazing, like really. You you really learn a lot. When you, when you but you gotta. And when they say, put it in a book, gonna keep some people down, you got to read. You got to turn off that crazy music. Turn off of them reality shows and all of them shows and just read it and see that you got a drug for HIV that will make it not even, you not even test positive for it, but you can't cure it. I see something that else that right it. to me. You, no. you have a drug for HIV that can make it disappear out your blood. But you got to take it every day for the rest of your life. But you can't find a cure that's for no, it. That's no long-term profit and cure. Mm -mm. Uh, and so it's never going to be the aim of the people. Oh, that's something Marion and I talk about a lot, too. We have these conversations. She's being real quiet over there. <laughs> because y'all got it. Y'all no, no, no. I'm about to pull you. I'm about to pull you. <laughs> Let's look at some of the comments and see what our people are saying. Because we don't just went off in here. Uh, Marion is on her way. I mean, Marion. Yes. Nisi is on her way. So good, she'll be here and um, we can talk from a victim's standpoint. Let's see what the people are saying on the video. My comments stop. It's, it always frees up and then it'll go out. So I have to use my phone. So y'all excuse me for using my phone. But let's see what they, what they, what are they saying? Any of your people commenting? Let's see. Let's see. 
Sandra said, this is a serious topic and a huge problem that needs to, uh, needs immediate attention. Yes, Sandra, that's why we own this. Because we know that we have to talk about it and stop pushing stuff up under the rug. And and these topics, and, and let me tell you, the topics that are, are um, on the forefront now, they are affecting us as black people, as African-American people. And we're turning the blind eye. We're not even talking about these things. We have to talk about it. And I promise you to bring those hard issues to bounce back Mondays with Dr. B. We talk about it all. Pastor Chris has given me um, permission to talk about anything. And I told you I'm talk about talk about talk about it all. Sex, everything, uh, down low, homosexuality, whatever. We're gonna talk about everything. So we trying to get it down. So we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> Um, Brenda said, I've heard this several times before about the foster care. Yeah, Brenda, um, thanks for watching. And I, I was literally devastated when I heard that about the foster care system. Because you're thinking your children are supposed to be protected and they're getting in there and they are actually being uh, foster parents not only getting money from the government, they're making money off of those children. Going out one, selling drugs is one thing. Another thing that they do a lot in foster care and then sex trafficking. Yeah, but I mean, also, we got to remember, because I work with young girls that are in the foster care system and they're in, um, they eventually go to Harris County Juvenile. And some of these foster parents are actually raping these children and molesting these children. And they don't have a voice because they, they're already yeah, in they're trouble. Mm -hmm. So nobody's believing them that they're being abused in these homes. So That's I don't believe in foster care. I wish we could all just have more adoptions versus the foster care system. Uh, and you, you also mentioned something uh, that's sort of tied into that, that some of the girls that you work with are being pimped by, by their own families. fathers. Yeah. Yes. Um, Brother Brown. Are doing it. Brother Brown, I, I hear you. I hope you're still listening. He says that I'm not emotionally equipped to handle this topic. I am a father of a young queen and if anything happens to my daughter, God be God be with them. I feel that way, and I'm the woman. same way. I'm telling y'all. I told people if you want to see me go to jail, yeah, do something to my children. Peace be still. I yes, bring my peace I, with me every day. Say, put some money on my right. commissary. Right. Put put some money well, on see, my books. That, that, that's, that's, that's one. That's one of the problems that we have right now. We have been beat. That the people who have the conscious. The people who have the mindset of knowing what's right, what should be acceptable, not what is acceptable, right. but what, what should, should be, be acceptable, those people have been also the ones that have been beat down into compliance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, when you have been trained to be compliant, you think about whether I'm going to do some jail time before you think about I'm going to take care of this. And I'll send a message and she'll tell you she's the same way. You fool around and touch one of our 13, yeah. you're going to sleep. It's a lullaby. Ain't, ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about I'll, it. I'm going to touch I'll you. I'll do the time. I, I'm yeah, going to touch you. Worth it. And, I, and I'll deal yeah. with the consequences later. Because, no, I don't want to do time. Yeah. No, I don't want to no, die. But she knows. I'll die for mine. That's I'll right. die for her. And I'll die for mine. Without a second thought, it's not something I got to think about. As a man, there's a standard I live by that says I'm responsible for protecting my kids and my wife and my house. Yes, and sir. if you violate that, I have no choice but to erase Thank you. you out of here. So if you don't kill me, you dead. That's right. And then I'm going to go deal with them them and see what they got to say about it. And I'll live with it. But I'm going to have right. trained the other men in my family. So now that I'm going, you're responsible thing. for stepping up in the next one. So why do we have men on social media now making light of sex trafficking? Right. Because they have been taught to be compliant and, and watch this go on. We will not shout. <laughs> <laughs> we don't win off in here. I was like, shoot, what am I doing? Oh, no. So look, they have been taught to be compliant mm -hmm. and to accept this. Like, that ain't my business. I am your business. And if we take it that on that mentality, right. then we'll be a better people. Stop
Stop so turning the blind eye to this stuff that's going on. We right. need to be taken better care of each other. Right. Yeah. Well, see, that's the individualism we've been conditioned into. Right. Yes. In a Eurocentric culture, we are the Afrocentric people who, yes. by nature, care about the people around us. Right. But we've been conditioned into an individualized mindset that says it's just about me. If it doesn't bother me, right. it's not about me. And so no one is actually caring until it, now we'll go, oh my God. We'll we'll put an oh my God yeah. on the yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll say prayers. I'm, I'm sending yeah, prayers. Everybody prayers. Everything is a simple escape and a right. way of getting away from the responsibility of being actually involved. If people thought, I don't know, see, I grew up in a neighborhood with a bunch of poor people. It was so poor that we were poor, but we were considered the richest poor people in yes. the neighborhood. Yes. Okay, so what happened is. If you came into that neighborhood, my parents knew every person on the street, yes. every person down the other street. They knew them by name. They walked down each other's house and talked to each other. Yes. If you went into a neighborhood where you could be three streets over from your house, but the people on that street knew you, and somebody pulled up to you and tried to make you get in the car, they would walk out on their porch and say, Ricky, yeah. baby, do they know your mama? Yes. No, let me call. Let me call earnestly and let them know these people trying to pick you up. Yes. Mm, they don't pull yes. out. That's the kind of thing we don't have now. Nobody knows. Him. You know, we were talking about this. You know, how many of our neighbors we know? And it ain't because we're not friendly, right? But you know, we live in this culture where everybody's keeping to themselves. Everybody doesn't want to upset nobody. And the thing is, we have become so individualized that we literally have this powerful force of apathy. Yes. That just, I, I see it happening to you. And that's something inside of me deep that says it's not right, but I really don't feel it. Uh, you know what? I'm not. I'm not that. Turn the blind eye. Turn the other cheek. Uh, and 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 I have a friend, and I just saw she's listening, but she don't stay here. She stays a little way, and there was a situation, and she was just talking to me about it. While she was talking about it, I was putting on my shoe. She had no idea I was putting on my shoe. I said, "What you want me to do?" She said, "It's two o'clock in the morning." I said, "What you want me to do?" And she's like, um, I said, text me the address because you don't know. Let me tell you what you want me to do. Text me the address. Mm -hmm. And I drove a 45 minute ride, took me about 25 oh minutes. My gosh. <laughs> Baby, on that bellway, <laughs> I had it open up. And when I got to the location, I zoomed by because I saw the location and I say, okay, I'm here. You got to be kidding me. Yeah. I say, I got you. You my sister, I got you. What you want me to do? Way. Yes. We gotta have that same mindset because yeah. if you go off into the black community, you got a bunch of young brothers who will do that, but they're doing it for the wrong, wrong reason. reason. They'll yeah. ride with they their pull bullets up. And, yeah. pull up and shoot up a house. house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and I, I, I've, said, I've, said, I've said this before. Huh? Nisi? Okay, okay. You lock it? I'm going to lock it. Leave it open. He here and I'm, I'm good. I got, okay, my, I got my stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got your, mm -hmm. what, your four, five? Nine. A nine? Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, we real good. Yeah, we real good. We definitely good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of heat in here. I got somebody else coming. Yeah, but, yeah, but, <laughs> but, and so my whole thing is, one of the things that I do with young black males mm -hmm. is to re-socialize them mm -hmm. into an idea of what it really truly means to be a man. Yes. Right. What it means to be a man. Number one rule in the 11 principles is you never bring harm to a woman. Right. right. You never ever bring harm to a woman. You never bring harm to a child. You never ever take advantage of someone who is vulnerable to you. Your responsibility as a man before becoming a provider is a protector. Yeah, yeah you protect. Your number one responsibility. Yes, you, you need to be a provider. Yes. But, See, one thing, that, and I tell them, I said, sometimes it gets hard because they'll make it hard for you as a black man. To right, provide. right. They purposely got you underemployed and overemploying the women. Yes. To, yeah, because true. they made you a commodity yeah. and you are less respected by someone that makes more than you. Right. It's by purpose. But let me tell you something where you can still win with the woman and sure you got something. Yeah. See, you can be broke and protect the woman. Yes. Right. yes. You can be broke and, and cover a woman. A oh, pay. here's another one. You can be broke and cover a woman in prayer. Yes. 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 See, there's a way to show a woman how valuable she is. Respect her. <laughs> right yes. off the bat. And so when she's sitting up and she's like, she said, do you believe this guy's on here making jokes? I said, because he doesn't have any respect for himself. Yeah. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know his role. See, when you know your role as a man, you're number one. I get offended by anyone who brings harm to me. And she tell you, it ain't just her. Right. And it ain't just my daughter. Right. But see, my daughter see me. 
Yes. Now, obviously, their mother is number one. Right. Then that then come my daughter. Right. And they all know, and and, and they'll tell you, I married I married my oldest. She married her first. Mm-hmm. My second married her first. Yes. My third, I don't know what she gonna do. Yeah. But I ain't had no babies come in. Right. I had none of that. And, I, and and it's not that I'm speaking down on having baby stuff happen. Right. But I had some kids. Yes. Young. Yes. So I, as a man, I had a kid young, and we were talking about this earlier. I don't judge women on a different platform. Right. I don't judge your sex and make my sex good. Right. In fact, I was harder on my sons right. about sexual activity than I was my daughter. I feel like I've treated my daughters in a way that when they do decide to do it, that's their decision, but they're going to be they with somebody know. that's really treating right. them really. like they're supposed to be treated. But what has to happen is you've got to have a natural understanding of who you are. Yes. And, and see... If you can have a heart as a young black male, then I'm finna go die for this color. Yeah. I'm finna go die right. for this block. I'm finna go die for this dude that started some stuff he shouldn't have started and that got everything all riled up. I'm finna go die, but you can't die for the black woman. You can't hold the black yeah. woman. You can't. And the whole thing is, we're never gonna get any higher than our women lift us spiritually. Y'all are powerful yes. as spiritual beings. And, and, and we're never gonna get this any further than our black men lead That's us. That's right. right. If we can't stand up and lead, we're lost. If we don't put a united front in the black community that says, touch a black woman, we're going to light you up. And that's right. right. And that's what she said. They, I've seen jokes about sex trafficking. I've seen a it's meme. It's not funny. I've seen a meme today. And I reported it. I'm like, but why would you a man? Because you have to prove the post for the group. Yeah. Why would you approve that? I was like, right. and I sent a message. Why would you approve this? Because that's, that's pretty much saying it's okay to sex traffic. Right. And then when I look at all the men, they got pictures of these brothers. Watch out for this guy because he's sex. He's he's snatching young girls. Right. Like and he a black man. And I'm like, dude, really? And I was looking for the statistics, and I don't know if you have it, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look now. What what's the the nationality of the victims? Predominantly, what I found, I don't think I have it here. Predominantly, uh, Latino and black. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are white girls that get caught up in it, uh, especially troubled white teens. Mm -hmm. uh, white teens that end up in the foster system, runaways, runaways or get caught up in it. Mm -hmm. But targeted, yeah. those who are going to cause the less problem if they come up missing. Because nobody cares about the brown skin people. Right. And so you got blacks at the top. You can Think about it. Uh, in 2015, the number was 64,000 mm -hmm. 64, black women. And girls missing yes. in America. But That's now, now 75,000. Yes. And so, okay, they're not just falling off the map. Right. Okay. And nobody's talking about it because we can say we love our women, but if you're sitting up and saying 75,000 of them just disappeared and there's not an uproar, I talked about this earlier on a video that I put up on YouTube. And my thing is, you got 75,000 women missing, and all we want to do is have a little conversation, talk about it, put a post up. There has to be a protocol in place within the black community. And I know we're talking about this as a whole, but within the black community, there have to be certain protocols in place. All other races have protocols and agendas yeah. that they operate by. So when something happens, you don't have to think about what you're going to do. You know what you're going to do. Every time a young black unarmed man gets shot, we lose our mind and we go haywire and we have no actual actions in line of what we're going to do about it. When a young black child comes up missing, we thought posting it on there and just hoping somebody sees them because we have no protocols in place about what we need to do when a black child comes. What are we going to do the first hour? What's the second hour? What's the third hour? How fast can we mobilize? Who can we call? The other thing is, and we've been talking about this, is we putting black men on the street on? I was just thinking hey, that in my we, mind. We, we putting black hey, men. Where the Chicago is? Where is it? This oh. fair club did in Chicago. Yeah. Who else is it? Yeah. Oh, but we, we brother we, Derek. We, 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 we're working, and obviously I'm not gonna call no brothers' names okay. on it. But I've been working with some brothers for about a year. Okay. And we've been talking. We're armed, and literally patrolling areas that are hot, yeah. looking for and hoping. We find somebody trying to take one of them babies. Cause we gonna ain't, ain't no we gonna hold you to the cops here. We light you, we light you up. Light them up. We light you up, and that's what. But we need more black men that's willing to do. I don't care. You know, my thing is last thing I wanna do is leave my beautiful wife right behind. 
but I would be a I would be a let I would be a failure as a model to our son if I and sit up sit and see this go down and don't do and don't anything. do nothing. You see this going on, but you say, "No, nah, we're not gonna get involved." I mean, and, and, Are you kidding me? And, and, and my hero was Malcolm. Yeah, mine but too. I, but I got I, I got respect for the, yes, the, indeed. The, the the Martin that the last year. Yes, yeah. The Martin who decided, <laughs> wait a minute. I've been doing this wrong. It's not about integration. It's about it's reparations. About yeah. It's about money. Yes. It's about ownership. Yes. It's about giving us our check. Yes. And, oh, you know, the one they say, we can't let this one live. We got to kill it. Kill the mouth that stood up there else. and knew no. if I speak the truth, they going to come from me. Yeah. But I, I got to no, speak to the mega Evers. The mega Evers with a wife and four kids at home yes. that knew if I keep speaking like this down in this town yeah. in, in, in rural Mississippi, they going to come after me. That sit up and did that because he knew it was going to ignite something. We still yes. talking about these people yes. because they stood up and they didn't back down. And that's my thing. People said, you put the target on my, well, I tell you what, I stopped being a man when I started backing down and worrying about what people going to do. do. And, and she used to be real upset with me because I would talk about that. My thing is, I ain't trying to die. No. I'm trying to live to be 100, at least. Yeah, at least. That's my thing. I want to live to be 100. I want to really enjoy the life we're building together. And I want to live long enough to put this real solid thing together that we're building for our children. Yes. But at the same time, if I don't set an example of manhood that says you can't touch mine. No living is in mine anyway. Right. You know, if anybody can walk up and just go off and then the first thing I'm going to do, well, I just want to say that I I, I, I pray for him and I forgive him. I now, forgive. I ain't forget. I'm a, me, and, me, me and God really, we're going to have to work. We're going to have to work on forgiving this yeah. thing out. When, when it's all said and done, you're like, you ain't forgave nobody. I'm sorry. I'll take me care of it. I'm going to forgive you after I kill you. Yeah. When I'm I forgive you now. Yeah. yeah. Once I settle the store, I, 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 I'm good. You know, but my thing is, you know, calming it down for a second. But the whole thing is, until we have men on the street, on the street Watch that are willing to light you up for messing with our women and our children and our elderly mm -hmm. and, and sitting up and thinking you can do it and get away with it yes. until we got until we have an actual team of not only guys who are patrolling the street but a team of uh that 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 will have something to do with uh intelligence yes. in other words we can track you and find you so yes. we're coming to get you after the fact right you might have got them off the street, but we come in to we find them. We find, find you. We get the kids, and they'll find you. Yes. That's the kind of mindset we have. And don't tell me we don't have it. We have the sharpest yeah, people it. on the yeah. planet. We, we the brilliant. Yeah. We, we are the Jesus. So my whole thing is, when are we, we going to stop? Away. We got this. Everything we so when are we going to stop sacrificing our women and our kids for the sake of peace that we yeah. don't have anyway? And we ain't going to get it no way. Right. That, that's my point. Wow. Okay, y'all, listen. It's hot up in here today. <laughs> we're talking about sex trafficking. We're talking about, uh, we got Dr. Wallace in here. We have his wife in here. We're talking about protecting our girls mostly, 99%, and boys too, because they're being trafficked as well. The number is, I need y'all to call in. I see all these comments. I got all these texts. Ask this question. I got your question coming up. Uh, call in. The number is at the top of the uh, video, 346-320-2103. Call in if you have any questions, comments about sex trafficking. And our second guest, Lisa, she's on her way. Um, she's actually a survivor of sex trafficking, and her story is amazing. Um, we're going to share it. I want you to call in if you have any questions. Comments about this topic, sex traffic. I want you to share this video. Share it with your uh, store watch parties. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it in your groups. Um, I do realize that it's going to get booted out of some groups because some groups don't want no controversy. Right. And uh, sex trafficking is controversy right now. I can't understand that for the life of me. But whoever it is, just tell me so I can make sure I don't join the group and I can uh, report the group because they ain't doing what they need to do. We need to we need to be raising awareness, right. educating, and then we need boots on the ground, like Dr. Wallace said, to protect. If you see something going on, do not turn the blind eye. Exactly. I ain't telling you to do what old crazy Bridget would do. You know, I'm blowing my horn, I'm hollering. Uh, leave her alone. I'm going to yeah. draw attention to you and do what I can. I'm not going to turn a blind eye. I'm not going to keep going. That ain't my business. 
No, we have to take care of ourselves because nobody else is doing it. When I, I looked up, I asked about the statistics of the race um, of the victims of sex trafficking. And so I looked at it, I looked it up, but I, I already knew, you know, but I like, you know, I don't want you, I want to give you what I think. I want to give you statistics um, because, you know, I, I already know, you know, I, we deal, I deal with healthcare and I always giving y'all the bad news about the statistics. So this one is deep, but I'm gonna give it to you in a minute. Let's see who we have on the line. Thank you for calling Bounce Back Mondays with Dr. B. You're on the line. Who's who's calling? Hi, Dr. B. My name is Clarence Brown. I'm actually watching the uh, ah, I'm What's glad. Up, What's hey, up? brother, I'm glad you stayed on. I read your comment. I feel you. Go ahead, I'm listening. Can you hear me? history lesson. So what we have to understand is one of the reasons why you're finding that there's not a lot of heavy sentencing uh, when it comes to sex trafficking is because it's tied to uh, Eurocentric pedophilia. Mm -hmm. And Eurocentric pedophilia can be traced back to the Roman Catholic Church yes. and beyond. Uh, it was considered something where we considered abnormal behavior. Uh, it wasn't necessarily considered that way. You can look at the church art. I was telling Marion about this the other day. You can look up church art. In, in, and it's in, hard, you see, and it's it's there in the yes. art, uh, homosexuality, pedophilia, and uh, a lot of aberrant behavior. So that's that. So trafficking in, has taken place, and the church is still doing it. That's not something they're obviously going to look at, and that's something that you could easily get get a contract put out on you if you could really point to some of the uh, skeletons in the closet where some of the bodies are hidden. But the truth of the matter is that it has a long history attached to the church. And one of the reasons why the church is experiencing such a pushback and an exodus now is because the church doesn't want to deal with its demons. Yes. Uh, the church doesn't want to deal with the skeletons in the closet. The church wants to appear pure uh, and not look at a lot of the damage that's been done. It's something that I have been pushing for for quite some time. And uh, I've had my life threatened. I've had, I've been blackballed in most churches. Uh, you know, luckily I have some people who really care and love about the truth. Uh, and I'm able to share with them and visit with them and do my, my thing is about power, empowerment, uh, and equipping people to win. And, you know, my thing is if you are in a situation where you are not, for instance, ed education, uh, we don't educate our kids to win. We educate our kids to obtain academic skills uh that work to plug them into mm -hmm. corporate america mm -hmm. uh where they're exploited in corporate america uh they're not paid nearly what they're worth they're not given the security for the work and the commitment and the loyalty that they give the companies we've trained them if you look at most schools especially schools that were built up until about 2005 architecture's changed a little bit since then but if you look at schools that were built up to about 2005 then go and compare the building structure to the old industrial plants that used to be in the community like car making plants in Detroit, uh, cereal plants, all kinds of different plants where people got jobs and worked in the plant. 
schools look just like the class. Yeah. Why? Because the school reports, the, the child reports to a school. When the bell rings, you go to a class. The workers report to a plant. When the uh, the clock when the clock hit, hits, you go report to your foreman. Your teachers are your foreman. You're being trained how to assimilate into a corporate structure. Yes. It was corporate America that went to the federal government and said that we're finding it hard to train these people and pull them in and get them to work. We need them to be more educated into training and learning. That's where the public system, public school system came from, was for educating children to become adults who could work in those plants. And so public, that's why you're seeing the demonetization and the defunding of public schools now because the game has changed. Yes. The plants are gone. The plants are gone. The plants they are, all gone. are gone. So there's a demonetization, and now you got a rise of charter schools and private schools. Mm -hmm. What's going to actually happen, and we were talking about this earlier, is the charter schools are now handpicking the cream of the crop. Yeah, you got to meet a special requirement right. to get in. So, so they're taking the cream of the crop from the public schools. Now the public schools cannot meet the standard, mm -hmm. and they're being uh, having their accreditations pulled and, and they're being the defunded. They're coming to take in and take over. Right. And, and then turn them into charter. Yes. So either the school is completely shut down or it's turned into a yes. charter. Yes. But what's going to happen is when enough of the public school systems have been shut down and discredited, like they're trying to jack HISD yes. right, now. right now. Okay, what happens is they're going to shut down a lot of schools. Yes. They're going to close a lot of them. Then the rest of the schools are going to be highly focused on charter because they're going to produce the numbers that will justify the funding coming there. Yes. And, and of course you can do that because you just went and picked all the high performing students to have in your, your school. You hand pick them. Uh, and then what happens is after they get to a certain point, you're going to find what nobody's ready for. Yep. And that's, they're going to stop funding charter schools because they're not required by the government or so the constitution to do it. In do the it. Yeah. Because there's no constitution that says public education is a right. And so what's going to happen is all schools are going to be privatized. So now we're actually educating for profit. Yep. And and, and so again, guess who's going to suffer the most? Black people. And when you Black cannot, people. and when you're not properly educated, and I'm not talking about with a degree. I'm talking about my ever my definition for education has always been when I wrote Miss Education yes, of Black Youth in America. Mm -hmm. my, my my definition of education is to prepare a child to go out into a world in which they are in which the, that a world that is inherently mm -hmm. hostile towards them and not only compete, but win. win. So you prepare them and empower them. Yes. That means far more than academic skills. Yes. First and foremost, before you get to academic skills, a kid has to know who they Life skills. Identity. identity. Self-identity. If I don't have self-identity, I don't have self-love. Yes. If I don't have self-love, I can't see myself in a place any further than somebody else tells me That's I right. can be. That's and right. as long as I don't have self-love, you can tell me what I'm worth. You can tell me anything. And you can tell me what I can do. Yeah. And so I don't want to dominate this because we've been waiting on this young lady to come in and share our story because I think she's going to provide a very enlightening uh, perspective. People need to see a voice. People need to see a right. face. People need to see something other than statistics. Right. We put numbers That's on right. things and we lose sight of the fact. Yeah. And I was explaining this to Marion and then I'm going to turn it back over to you. Okay. I was explaining this to Marion, maybe it was this morning or yesterday that one of the biggest problems we have is that we don't have a face on it. It's it's all numbers. Mm -hmm. We got statistics. And so when someone says something, they see a statistic and they can't connect to it. So that's this growing apathy for it because I don't understand it. I can't say it. And so you have uh, what they don't really see. And this is the big part. But what you went through, mm -hmm. it was traumatic for you. Mm -hmm. And people might get that. People see that and say, oh my God, yeah. that's so hard. Yeah. That's all right. What they didn't see is how it tore a family up. Right. Mm -hmm. What they right. didn't see is that some people that we're not going to meet tonight right. are still in need of counseling and probably didn't get it. Right. right. And that that is is a is a downward spiral. Spiral. Let me show you how. She has a brother. I don't know if she does, but I'm saying just using her as an example. Mm -hmm. She has a brother who totally loses it because his sister is gone. And then when she finally comes back, he hears the stories about what she's going. He's traumatized. Mm -hmm. Now he goes to school. He acts out. Here. Because he's a black boy, they're gonna automatically classify him as oppositionally defined. Yeah. And so now they're gonna start putting him on medication. The same psychotropic medications that his dad is probably in prison for for selling. There you go. Because it's one by uh really one Adder molecule or being cocaine. Adderall. A another one. <coughs> Adderall. They're gonna one put molecule him on off from being cocaine. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. now you, you, you got him in there. So you got him doped up and sit down for, to do something that he was never meant to do in the first place. That's so right. he was never meant to sit down between the ages of 
4 and 10. They need to they be need active. Business. They need to be exactly. moving. They need to be singing. They need to be up and touching. They need to experience and think, touch more. things. Mm -hmm. you know? And so what, what, what you've done is you're asking a five-year-old, is, is the age they start doing this to him at five. You're asking him to sit up and do something that a 20-year-old has trouble doing. Right, right. And then you sit up and say his opposition will get fired. Because we know now that 70% of the teachers in the public school system are middle-aged white women who have a natural fear of him. Oh, like I'm talking about at five years old. Yes. They're afraid of him. Yes. And so they want to get him qualified. Uh, qualified in some way as being special needs to get him out of the class. Right. But you're also going to alienate him. Now he's going to go out at some point and do something he probably shouldn't do, harm somebody else. Now they're affected. Yep. Yeah. And, and then it, it keeps going down the line, and it all happened because somebody didn't look out, or somebody mm -hmm. wasn't caring. Somebody saw it and didn't say anything. Yes, somebody said something's yeah. weird about what's going on over there, but not my business. Right. Yeah. And we've got to get away from that. We've we got to get away from that. We gonna we gonna raise awareness, and that's that's why I wanted Dr. Wallace on the show so we can talk about the statistics, talk about the issue, talk about the problem. But I wanted to bring Ms. Nisi Hamilton on the show to talk about her experience live and live in color. Mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful young lady who experienced sex trafficking. Welcome, ma'am. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for being on Bounce Back Mondays with Dr. B. I'm so glad that you can make it. How was your other event? Oh, my God. It was amazing. I am so tired. Those kids <laughs> drove me crazy. I came here with my You got your rain on. Oh, oh, my right. God. I'm like, I stand for the first time in okay. my life. I'm 32 years old. So I thank you guys for allowing me to have that experience and stuff. Yeah. He's been holding it down. We've been going at it. No, I can tell. It's I'm raw up in here. here. I'm in here like, hold on. <laughs> With some passion around yes, this. yes. You know, I'm listening. So. so tell us about tell us about you. Who is Nisi Hamilton? Oh man, that is a loaded question. Yes. Um, I'm just discovering myself. Okay. When when I was born, um, my mother left me in the hospital. So I don't know if my name is my name or if my birthday is my birthday. Yeah. But I just roll with it. Yeah. And you know, the the thing about being about having that encounter with learning who you are is experiencing the bible because in the bible you wasn't a game changer until you became a name changer yeah right so all my life my family called me nisi and i'm thinking you know the normal n-i-e-c-y mm -hmm. till i had that you know one experience with god where i get so upset with him and i'm like okay hold on dude you, you gotta come back rewind let's back this up what's really going on and so when i look up the word nisi and I'm like, man, God is my best. Oh, so I, I go back <laughs> and then I look at the origin, the Hebrew origin, yes. the Jewish origin, because I wanted to make sure. I'm like, God, let's, let's make this, let's make sure that this is what this is, because this is a Holy Ghost experience that I'm experiencing with you. And and people forget that God will, you know, impartation is real. Yes, it's necessary. Yes. That's right. where we get passion from, mm -hmm. yeah. impartation. Right. And <laughs> when you are experiencing that spiritual moment of impartation, he will drop what I call success That's nuggets. Mm -hmm. And those success nuggets are very, very important because that's that's your time when your spirit is so keen, when you yeah. can hear everything that the Lord is trying yeah. to tell mm -hmm. you at that you yes. know, particular moment. And I was so keen. I was eager to learn. After I learned, okay, Nisi, he went back and he said, okay, to make sure you know it's real. Then he gave me, um, he said, I'm a father to the fatherless. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when he gave me that, I'm going through my life like, oh, okay, I ain't never met my daddy no way. So yeah. it's got to be yeah. true. You know, I got right. to be related <laughs> to this. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's why I talk about that's my yeah. dad. Yeah. You know, yeah. daddy yeah. got to me. You know, I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, there's a difference between religion and yes. having a direct relationship with Absolutely. God. Absolutely. And your relationship with God is like any other relationship. It hasn't started until y'all had y'all first. Yes, yes, that is so true. <laughs> yeah. That is Everybody's so true. Everybody's walking around and, oh my yeah. God, we don't say that. You don't, we don't say that. Like that. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's and, my and, daddy. And like, you know, don't question God. I'm like, what? But they, but they, but they question. You know, and I'm like, I'm like, Jesus you know, question all the rest of y'all say. Yeah, yeah. You know, you talk about David. David, you just say that. But my whole thing is, 
you know, David's in a position where he is, Saul is trying to kill him, kill right? Him, yeah. And when he writes to God, he's like, hey, look, what's up with all this shit? What's going on? He said, you, you, you told me you enjoy praise. You and you told me you inhabit praise. The praise of the but then what David, but that, but that, just what David told them. Mm -hmm. I can't praise you from the grave. I can't praise you from the grave. So what you gonna do about gonna this? Do it. And then later on, he has to come back and say, although I walked through the valley of the shadow. Why? Because when I told him I needed him, yeah. he came through. But see, you got these disagreements. Oh, Moses and God went at it. Yeah, they went at it. The children of Israel would have been gone a long time ago if Moses had well, seen it several times. Yes. They sit up there and say, no, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a, minute. Yeah. a 35 day journey took 40 years. Really, Moses? <laughs> really, but, but, Hebrews? But, but, but what I'm saying is. <laughs> I mean, me and my dad had some real serious conversations right. when I was growing up. We had some disagreements. We had, well, I don't understand where that's coming from. You got to tell me something. I'm, yeah. I am not that compliant. I'm just going to do. What, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Now, you done had me sitting up here all this time. Now, you tell me I ain't supposed to be here. What's up? Right. You, you know, I need some understanding. But that moment mm -hmm. where you actually sit up and say, hold on, dude, wait a minute. Right. That he said, now nah, I can talk to you. Right. Because now you're not emulating mm -hmm. a relationship with me. You got a real you, relationship. You're coming at me. And I ain't not, my whole thing is you, you you don't really know God if you're thinking God is looking to punish you. No. Or looking to destroy you. You can't right. possibly know no. God and the consciousness and the power of God that resides in you. That's what when, when Christians get to talk of me, what's it? You're a Christian by name only. Yeah. Okay. It's something that I, you never hear well, me. To be Christian is to be Catholic for number one. Number right. two, I'm right. not Christian. I'm Jewish. Okay, Are so, you Hebrew? See, I'm all close. the way. Yeah. So, so, I'm all see, the way Jewish. But see, now you got to have some history. Yeah. You got to have a history. Okay, we can't do that in here. Oh, well, we can't do that. That's a different show. Because yeah. we ain't going to get to this. Because baby, <laughs> that, was that was just me. That was just me. So you got to have some. You yeah. got to have some. But what I just talk about? Yes. Did I just not yes, talk about did. identity? Yes, you did. Well, you don't know who you are. Yeah, yeah. You already lost. Treat you in a kind of way. Yeah, do you in a kind of way? Oh, you know who you are. You had that conversation with God. You had that conversation right. with your dad. Yeah, I did, and he came down. He told me the truth, and he helped me to understand who I was in my position, in my place. And then once I understood that about myself, then instead of looking at the Bible like it was a book, I started looking at it like it was a history lesson history. for me. So then I started, then once it became a history lesson, then it became leadership lessons. So these yes. were lessons from leaders. So I started going through my own history to see which leader my life emulated the most so I could figure out how to not do it the wrong way and then how to Again. do it the right way. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right, and so the first leader that rang a bell to me was Rahab. Mm. Okay, oh. Rahab was so. Wait, she was a whore. Yeah, That's what they say, right? She was a whore. Rahab, Rahab, Rahab. a whore in the Bible. Oh, yeah. You know how many lessons? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not prostitute. Not prostitute. She was sex trafficked. Yes. And Rahab, Ooh, come on now. Through her sex trafficking, she the Bible it. says specifically mm. that her house was in the wall oh. of Jericho. That yes. means that when she the king men, when everybody came in to just pitch on, oh, like God. how we have uh, big homes and then there's the gate. Yes. Like as soon as you come through the gate, her house was the first house yes. you, would, yeah. you would get to. And one of the things that God pointed out to me, only the Holy Spirit could point this out to me, he said that out of all the men that she was sleeping with, they were two becoming historians because usually, this go with any woman, whenever a woman sleeping with a man, Typically, that man is going to tell her everything, everything. that's going on. That's right. Right. So the very thing the that was said up, all the time, yeah. so the very thing that was that Satan meant to kill Rahab was the very thing that saved Rahab. Because what Rahab did was when she seen Joshua and Caleb and yes. them come through, yes. she said, "Hold on, I know y'all." My people know y'all. My people scared of y'all. What y'all doing over here? See, she brought the conversation to them. To them. Uh -huh. And so then she was able to come up with a conclusion. Okay, well, I know you're here for something because my people scared of you. So what can I bargain with you before we even get this, get this thing, thing started? Right. Yep. And so Joshua was looking like, well, hold on. I, I, 
And you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to run away from you. Are you sure this serious? Are you sure you want to do business? She's like, yeah, I want to do business with you. Here's what I'm willing to do. And so Joshua goes, well, what do you want to return? And she said, all I want is for you to save my family. In that very moment, Rahab, who was not only a prostitute, but a victim of human trafficking, became a war hero and a war strategist. She became the first African-American woman to have a voice during a time where women were not allowed to have a seat at the table. Yes. She gave us our seat at the table. The second woman who was the victim of human trafficking was Esther. Uh -huh. Oh, so my God. God. Yeah. Oh, she gave me that's the oh, last Esther came through and see and see. And when I talk to my girls that are coming out, I tell them all the time, I said, Well, you know, you really want to know how the strip club work. Go go ask Bastion why she didn't drop it. That's why right. she didn't drop it like it was hot for the king. And then go ask Esther why she dropped it like it was hot for the king. Because if taking off your drawers cannot save your whole entire generation of pe people, then put your drawers your back clothes. on. There you go. That's right. Put your drawers back on, baby. Because if you ain't not here rescuing for real, yeah, they, they were saved. saved. She she got, saved. Yeah. But Rahab got saved through her husband, who was an Israelite man. They brought, she worshiped the moon god, which goes back to That's the Bible when it says that God is no respecter of man. See, he, see, the thing about God is he's not going to correct him. So he said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to apologize. Yes. I'm not going to apologize I'm for not. no guilt. Yeah. I'm not apologizing for nothing. I'm, I'm not yes. taking this back. But I'm a many, God who cannot lie. Yes. But how many people? have been convinced to apologize for the gift. Right. Mm -hmm. How many people, Constantly. because they don't have a relationship, right. they, they don't, don't know who they are. That's it. They you know what I got? Like, you know, and I'm going to tell you a, a success secret, that because I know people always ask me, like, Missy, how did you get out? How did you do this? How did right. you do this? One of my success secrets, I'm going to give you guys just for free, because it's going to be in the book, is that the minute, how I became attractive to everybody is when I started to heal. Amen, sister. Forgiveness is the Amen. key. Man, when I tell you, when I can look at the men who was trafficking me and say, you know what, brother, I love you and I forgive you. That's when that's when God started paying attention to me. He said, "Do it so that they'll know that you are my child. That's Don't right. do it so that you can get a, a like on Facebook, so that people can pat you on Amen. your back." Uh, none of that. I got people flying in from New York, Los Angeles, uh, Washington D.C. You name it. People that I wouldn't have even been in contact with on my own, saying, "You know what, Nisi, we paying attention to you." Oh, no, we know who you are. There are people that are speaking up for me who I don't even say, oh, it's okay for you to speak up for me. And none of that. Right. I didn't ask for none of that. Right. That's, all, that's all God because he wants the glory. And he ain't got the mm -hmm. one and he going to get it because, get it because God wants a tribe. He wants a people that he can trust with trouble. And yes. if God can oh, trust you yes. with trouble, yes. just have several seats. There you well, how go. I got into the activism part of human trafficking is when I noticed that every time we saw something human trafficking, it only had a white face to it. People automatically right. thought that it only happened to white girls. And when I went back um, and did research, I um, said, well, listen, I said, well, listen, wait a minute. I, I'm, uh, I'm under the impression that the reason why white people don't have a history is because they've never been oppressed. So, number one, what you will not do is send your people wow. into my community to talk to African-American girls who have been oppressed about human trafficking, only to make them feel more or less valuable wow. because they cannot live up to your expectations for success. That's a word. Wow. That's a word. So we just cannot do that. Right. Come on now. So, right. I said, you know what? I can't give Satan that kind of claim. And I, you know, my wife, listen, I got some bomb ass white friends right. you hear me they listen to me and they understand exactly what it is what i mean because right. i'm like listen and they'll say let me see i've never been through anything like that exactly that's the reason why you shouldn't have this conversation you can you listen, listen to me, me but you can you know how they hurt me you cannot assess you evaluate. cannot assess evaluate you can't even tell me how to get out or get healed you can't tell me nothing Your, the greatest gift and they are my friends. Yes. The greatest gift they ever been able to give me was to use their privilege to make sure I had a seat yes. at the table. That's right. And you know what? When they friends and they love you, that's what they supposed to do. That's right. That's what they supposed, right. supposed, supposed, supposed to do. And we were talking. <coughs> excuse me. I was talking to my friends the other night, and they were saying, you know, hey, you know, we had uh, another young lady. She was Caucasian, loving to death. Uh, you know, know of her mother and of her situation as well. You know, I said, okay, well, she went to. Um, 
to Washington, not Washington DC, but to the White House to meet Trump, who's our first lady of the United States, is also a victim of human trafficking. And she's never yes. talked about her own story right. or what it means to her because she's my a male thing, order, yeah, she's a male order body. Mm-hmm. Being yeah. a male order body is an element of human yes. trafficking. Yeah. Yes. And so and what I've learned from that That's how she got to the United yeah. States. Yes. Right. So it's like she, you know, because the issue has never been addressed. Because see, what I tell you, God on his glory, you got to be equipped to go back and get people. That's see, this true. is about the 21st century Moses. Mm-hmm. Okay, see, we have we had Moses, then we had Rahab, then we had Harry Potter, yeah. <laughs> then we had Ida B. Wells. Now we got to see him. Okay, you, honey, 21st century Moses. I ain't going to sleep on it. I'm ready for this. Do you understand? Yes, so I said, they were like, well, Nisi, you know, we, we, we got to the White House. I said, yeah, y'all been. <laughs> yeah, but y'all been there. Yeah. I could see if a Mexican went, went to and a black, you know, it was it was so generalized to where it only looked like just one person got saved. So how do we measure right. success if we only showing one <laughs> benefit yeah. factor of no. success? We so and then when girls see that, when African American girls, who by the way, if an African American mom's child come out missing. You go ask the average African American woman, do she know what to do? What's the first thing you do when your child come up missing? Who do you call? What resources are available to you? Because the thing then is, I just say this. African American yeah. children are coming up missing all the time. Saying, and we're the saying. last ones with the resources mm-hmm. all the time. We're the last ones with the information. But not this time. Not anymore. It's not going to happen anymore because we qualify. And we finally got a face that right. said, okay, hello. Here we are. This is what we're gonna do. Foster care is a joke. We talked about that. We talked about, talk about that. And, I can, and about. I can talk about it. Okay, so I aged out of foster care at fourteen. Don't ask me how. So, I did. so tell me, how did you become a victim of sex yeah. trafficking? Was it from foster care? Yes, there is a foster care to human trafficking pipeline. Okay, yeah, real yeah. talk. We just talked about real it. talk. Yeah, I, my uh, the judge. I didn't even have an attorney at that time. I was fourteen. The judge emancipated me from my mother. They sent me back home. Seven months after they sent me back home, my grandmother passed away because I was already considered an adult minor or whatever. My mother was locked up in jail at that time. She was she had not uh, been deceased. I was like a little adult walking around. Wow. So um, here it is. I'm in a, in an apartment because my grandmother had housing, and you know it takes time for you to clean up the apartment to get it ready for somebody else. Mm-hmm. I'm living in a dirty mattress in that apartment. You know, yeah. just trying to live because I'm doing the last thing I seen happen, which was, you know, egg, scramble of egg, yeah. you know, butter, sugar, and rice, yeah. you know, Kool-Aid, you know, make do what it do. Keep that secret. Don't say nothing until your run is over right. or whatever. End up homeless behind a Walmart because the housing people are like, well, you got to go. You know, you can't stay here. What are you doing here or whatever. Behind Walmart in a, in a cardboard box. I took baths in the bathroom at the Walmart. And I'm talking about this one. Walmart didn't have good bathrooms. Look, I went and told Walmart, I said, I could tell you what your bathroom looked like 20 years ago. How much you want to bet? Don't play with me. Because I was in there. Do you understand me? I was like, this is before y'all was eco-friendly. Don't play. I was like, I was in them joints when y'all still had the brown paper towels laying on the side. You had to make them up one at a time, you know? Because for me, those were shoes. Yeah. Do you understand? Um, not, you know, put pressing the water down because it was time on how many minutes when they just all when all they had was that pink soap and the little silver yes. thing yeah. or whatever, yeah. just like they did in the schoolhouse, you know, because that was a bath for me. Yeah. Wow. You know. And I would leave, I would get dressed in the Walmart, lead at Walmart and walk underneath the freeway to go to all day night Center. Wow. So I was homeless wow. as a student. Today, 20 years later, we are just now calculating and, and getting an account of how many homeless students we have. And between Fort Bend, Harris County, and Montgomery County, it was reported just last year alone 1.3 million homeless students. 1.3 million. Yeah, now, where is the now yeah, Harris County, work. HISD, those girls that were African American alone that were homeless, 30,000. Now, if I got those statistics, guess who else got those yes. statistics? The state the have them mm-hmm. and the predators have them as well. Yeah. And not only that, here's a bigger picture. Right now, we have 90,000 at-risk students, not because uh, they're sick, 
Uh, not because, because, and here's the thing about children. Children are more prone to illness mm-hmm. and at risk of health, you know, factors. Mm-hmm. It's just because their parents are incarcerated. Yeah. So for me, if my parent is incarcerated and you guys are in law enforcement and, and you know that there's an even more risk factor, how come we can't bridge the gap and have a relationship there? Where's the mentorship program at right there? Don't give me the girls and boys club. Don't give me the big right. brothers and brothers. Don't big brothers and big sisters. Don't 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 give me all some men. Don't, don't, don't give me girls. Girl yeah. 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 And I can and talk about that. Just, I already know. And you, and, you, and you know this. You know this from experience. Uh, the reason that black men leave right now is boots on the ground is because none of those organizations are actually doing now they're good for photo shoots yeah yeah they do they great with photo ops and everything like they great fundraisers because they do all the right product they put all the right promotions out but actually meeting these kids at a point of need what you gotta understand is the record the incarceration and recidivism rate Mm -hmm. so you're not only losing your parent the chance of them going back is 75 percent in the first three years of their release the chances of the child going back every child that that's been in foster care has uh, over fifty percent chance of becoming foster care. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. by the time the girls are aged out of foster care, fifty percent of them by the time they're nineteen are already pregnant with a baby. Right. So just uh, last year alone, we had a, a girls aged from fifteen to nineteen years old. Um, they had about thirty thousand babies in between them. I bet half of them don't have yeah, about 57%. Well, over, well, over a little bit over 60%, 60% of those were African American girls, and the rest of them were broken into Latina That's and my right. Caucasian girls. And I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how do we take home economics out of school and, and be okay with it? Mm-hmm. How did we take um, even shop, right? You know what I mean? Out of school, we're talking about tools. For to help, to help live, yeah. we gotta stop loving our kids to death and start loving them to life. Right. Mm-hmm. The life. We we love them to death so much that that they missing out on opportunities to be great parents. Right now, they learn how to be great spokesmen for whatever it is that they choose they want to be. We keep telling kids, "Hey, you can be whatever it is you want to be, but whatever it is they want to be, we're not even being for ourselves." Right. That's so right. who? How do we? How do we stop that and and then reset? That, that that trend right there because it's, adultification is like the number one thing of how girls are getting trafficked. And then there are different type of pimps. You know, the, the first pimp that most girls are going to run into is a Romeo pimp. Is it, somebody um, interesting. Nice. Make them feel no, no, they ain't that interested in them. They got to be interested. They just don't listen. Okay. That's it. Yeah. They, they going to listen. listen and you gonna tell all your business to them and they're gonna get as much information from you as they can. And then if they ain't even gonna ask you for no sex, they're gonna go three, four, five, six months without sex. And be, and, they, and you thinking, oh, this guy loves me. Mm-hmm. He cares about me. He's thinking about me. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the one I need to be with. He buys stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, he buys stuff, yeah. whatever, you know, Gucci, Fendi, Prada, whatever it is, you know, he got it. You ain't asking no questions. Want to get your nails done, get your hair done, you know. Okay. That's what it is. And then you say, okay, well, okay, well, he must be the guy for me. Well, surely, surely I can't go wrong in this situation. And then all of a sudden, it's time to pay up. Mm -hmm. It's time to pay back. It's time for me to get a return on my investment. And because... Little old Nisi, I can't speak for everybody else with this 10th grade education. I guess I got a debt. And so that's the second sign to sex trafficking. Girls who constantly have a debt that they have to pay, that you try to figure out how are you in all this debt? And you you don't even have any you haven't even invested yourself in anything. You ain't in school, you ain't you ain't working nowhere. You know, what what are you doing with your time and your money? Let me stop you. So bounce back family. Let's let's clear something up. So we're talking about sex trafficking, and we have Dr. Rick Wallace and Mrs. Nisi Hamilton in the room. Mm-hmm. And um, we were talking about sex trafficking, snatching kids off the side of the street, snatching them out the neighborhood. Okay, that's them. not sex trafficking. Hold on. Mm-hmm. So Nisi just brought in a whole nother topic. We're talking about prostitution. Mm-hmm. We're talking about it in that sense. Uh, as a child. Though. As a child, though. Mm-hmm. 
then you meeting somebody and they telling you all this right stuff. They're not even asking you for sex, you said. Mm -hmm. They're just buying you stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you got to pay a debt. And so how you pay that debt, Nisa? Well, you do whatever it is that they tell you you got to do. And, it, and it, ain't, it ain't pretty. I was working from maybe um, 6 o'clock that morning to 6 o'clock that next morning. So it's, it's like... Um, if you don't make the money that you're supposed to make that night, then you can't get nothing to eat. What? No, you can't eat. So it's how do they determine how much money you're supposed to make? I mean, mm -hmm. you bring it to them. They'll tell you the quota that okay. we need 1500 Don't come back until you have that. Or you can't eat. You can't have nowhere to sleep that night. And you got to remember, you totally invested at this particular time. Because he done bought you all this stuff. Well, he done bought you all this stuff. But not only that, there's probably a disconnect between you and your family. So this is all you got. You done told him all your business. He got enough ammunition against you to where he can use it against you. and you Which includes threatening your family. Yeah, which includes threatening your family. Threatening, I, my family's been threatened so many times. It, it it it's just it's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. So one of my questions, I, I hate this because we 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 got our other host here. She come on at seven, but we got we gonna work this. Uh, okay, we gonna work it till seven. <laughs> one of my questions is, why didn't you leave or run away? That was one. Why didn't you leave? How did you leave or run away? I was already. I was already, was already abandoned. Homeless. Didn't yeah, I was already home. abandoned. The state abandoned me. My family abandoned me. My mother couldn't this? help me. My grandmother. Your grandmother was. was your grandmother was dead. Your yeah, mother I was in jail. My, she never met my dad. Y'all hear this? Who, who was gonna help me? I was a black girl that was lost in the system. I was forgotten about. Nobody came to figure out what was going on with me. I unenrolled myself out of school, enrolled myself into GED. Everything I ever done from the age 14 up until now, I always died. I did. And you know, and I and I deal with that. Even even being um married in my relationship with my husband, it has to be in my name. Because if it's not in my name, then the least I know, if you decide to leave me, at least I'll have I it's mine. This. It's mine. And for me, it's it's personal, and I and I have to talk to him and tell him like, listen, this is the part, the part where I get to heal, and this is the part where you get to listen. If you're gonna be married to me and stay married to me, then we have to go through this together, so that you don't see me as an enemy. Just understand that you know until I get over this, then just respect the fact I just like stuff in my name. How long were you trafficked? Oh my God, five years of servitude the first time. I left and went to the military. Five years of what? Servitude. Tell me what that is. Wait, so five. So that means that you got traded. Trade. Yeah. So to be sex trafficked means to be traded. Mm -hmm. I was traded about ten to fifteen times a day or a night rather, and so that means that I've probably been raped about four to six thousand times. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Mm -hmm. So this this been my first year, just coming out to just. Say it. Don't cry because your baby cry. So my question to you is, are you getting help? Are you getting some type of counseling? Y'all want help. Okay. Okay. Y'all want help. Talk to y'all about it. Okay. Talk to them about it. Work through it. Absolutely. And I have friends. I have okay. some vibrant sisters. Um, shout out to Rachel. Shout out to um, um, Marion. Shout out to Tracy. Okay. Uh, Heather. A Sadali, uh, a new booty of my I'm husband. Sure right now, yeah. <laughs> uh, just uh, you don't make me cry. Uh, Catherine, she's here. Catherine Flowers. Oh, yeah. Um, it's uh, Charles Andrews. Um, my my adoptive parents. Um, well, good. I just asked that question and, because I deal with young women too that have been sex, sex trafficking, mm -hmm. and they're in the Harris County Juvenile System, mm -hmm. and so they yeah, the y'all have a care similar. Yeah. yeah, the stories are similar, but I often wonder how do you deal with it if you don't sit and talk to a professional to kind of peel back the layers of the hurt, the pain, all of that stuff. Well, I'm 32, so me peeling back hurt and pain is me going through the motions of everything that I didn't get to do when I was a child. Okay. Um, because my life is public. I, I just do it in everybody's face now. 
Okay. Whether whether it's uh, people watching me go to school, yeah. people you know watching me, I don't know, play basketball. Um, I buy bicycles. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, you're gonna make me cry. Uh, mm-hmm. When people call me to give away stuff, yeah, I give bicycles. Yeah, because it's the one thing I always wanted oh. as a kid. Oh, so I give other kids bicycles because that's an experience that I didn't have. Yeah. And it was always like the bicycle I wanted was the one with the little things on the side with uh-huh. the banana seat. <laughs> so that's your that's healing right. process. Yeah, that's, that's how you that's how I heal it. and go through it. I'm always raising money for people, for other causes. I give more than I have. Yeah. Um me and my husband, we rescue about 20 to 30 girls every year. Praise God. Wow. People Praise come God. to our house and they Praise God. They can rest. Yeah, they can get they can bras and safe. panties mm-hmm. and sanitary items, and actually learn about the hospitality industry if they choose to go that way. Yeah, they learn. I teach them how to turn what they've done into um, a resume. Okay. So if you've been counting money, this is accounting. Yeah, so you um, that on your resume. Yeah. Right, things like that. If you've been counting pimps and you know who who you're gonna sleep with on such and such day, that's mm-hmm. HR. You're going up and down the pole. That scaffolding you need to be in construction. And then, so, so strip club, mm-hmm. sex shack. Mm-hmm. As a child, because I want to, and the reason why I keep saying that is because people are getting confused about um, people, uh, women adults. who like to. Amen. Be, we just we right. talked about that. Now, <clears throat> domestic violence and molestation is a social device issue. They have their own. Yeah. Um, healing process. Right. right. Okay. But together is the reason why women end up being uh, wanting to traffic themselves because they never got healing, healing. as a child. child. So when you were talking earlier today, I do teach about the history of human trafficking and how we even got that this far. Mm-hmm. Mainly it's because um, in the African American community, and I know they don't like to hear it, but our mothers and our grandmothers were our first traffickers. And how that even mm-hmm. happened? Yeah, is because well, and it wasn't so mm-hmm. much as that. Just go go all the way back to when they first started getting ideas. It was new to them. Mm-hmm. I, ideas disrupted uh, their the part where Black women were accepted into uh, the moving forward pattern. Uh, example, when white women decided that it was wrong to get beaten, because we remember women used to be property right. to white men, right. and they could beat them, they could do whatever it is they wanted to do with them. When white women gained a coalition, their activism was called feminism, mm-hmm. and they gave it a name because they didn't want to tolerate it anymore, and they right. called it domestic violence. So now it's got a name, Everything. it's got a movement behind it. Mm-hmm. And now it's, this is a big idea. Not only that, it has a face. Yeah. So by the time black women got that information, they was like, oh, wait a minute, here I ain't got to beat me no more. Oh, okay, I ain't got to take this. Hungry. Yeah, it was like, okay, here I mean, you can go. Yeah. I ain't got to be with you. But what black women forgot was that at that time, we was only making 30 cents to a dollar that white women were making. So we lost income when Henry left. Mm-hmm. So That's right. we, stayed. we stayed with Henry, who was already whooping us, and trying to equate himself to white men's uh, ideologies of, you know what I'm saying? Right. right. And so then it was like, okay, but well now I got you where I want you to be. Now I can have whatever it is I want from you, yeah. including your children. There you wow. go. Wow. There and you go. And right. You there. know, now you own something that's got me hot and yeah. something I've been talking about all the time. We don't want to talk about incest. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about incest. We don't want to talk about it. wasn't for us. That's why we're going through That's why we're going through You know, we don't want to talk about it. And we don't want to talk about the prevalency yes. and how pervasive it is and how common. You know, you know, I, I I thank God for my wife. My wife my, herself was a trafficker, but she's a survivor of sexual assault as a minor. And she had to go through God the healing you. process. And one of the things that I've talked about and that we discussed before she and I became a couple 
was the need for black men to be able to hear, to understand, and to love black women back to life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's been my goal. That's one of the things I teach the mentors, Claris, yeah. uh, <laughs> jo uh, Michael Jordan, all yep. of that, is that we have to love our women back to life. We got to give them the space to heal. Right. Instead of judging them, we got to understand how they're behaving, why they're behaving that way, and then give them the space and the security and the safety to say, I can become whole again. And then we've got to be honest with ourselves. Listen, we well, see we have a problem in, in the we have a problem in the black home with silent condemnation. Yes. What silent condemnation is, I know you're doing this to my baby, but I'm not going to say it. And then you talk about the church is where that is being taught, and nobody wants to say that. Right. But pastors were telling black women, don't report him because he's the breadwinner. Right. So he's sitting up doing this. You know he's doing. That's this. believable. I, and 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 I can and I can say that from experience only because from eleven and thirteen, my mother who was a product of a rape, yeah, was forced to have a relationship with her sisters and with her sister and brother, father. So for two years, you know, back then, yeah. and we told my mother was born in sixty five. Yeah, you know, and you fourteen and sixty five. So it's what it's seventy seventy nine around this time. Uh, well, take like maybe 75 mm -hmm. around this time, 1975. You know, black kids weren't allowed to drink coffee, right? You know, yeah, we like, you out your mind. You know, my mother was already drinking coffee yeah. and already doing things and experiencing, you know, going through adultification mm -hmm. and really just trying to figure out if I have to do this or whatever, how come um, I'm not treated like the rest of the, yeah. you know, kids in the family. Mm -hmm. And so with that. That significant moment in her life turned into her having sex with all the male family members. Wow. And so because of those incidents, growing up as a child, whatever they didn't, whatever the family didn't, you know, deal with with my mother, I got it. That yeah, there you go. So what we call uh generational curses is really, you know, and language wise is epigenetic. Wow. That's, 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 that's an area, that's 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 an area that's especially with yeah. the epigenetic yeah. transfer of trauma. Yeah, yeah. 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 transfer of right. trauma. And yeah. that's, that's what it that is. trauma transferred right to me. So it's like, I and thank God I learned this at an early age, you know, 9, 10, 11. I'm starting to feel like, I don't belong to this daggone family. This ain't my family. I don't want to be around these people. You know, something in me. Kept saying, and I'm yeah. gonna say something. I'm gonna give you a credit. Yes, give it to me. Holy Ghost kept telling, kept telling me, yes. you know, that, that you about to experience something, you about to go through something, but you will bounce back. Yeah. And so, that, oh, yeah, I'm gonna give you a credit. I'm gonna give you a credit. You will, you will yes. bounce back. Yes. And so, as a little girl, I knew, you know, even watching my mother. The word of God says that you should honor your mother and your father. Yes. My success clue number three. I am not where I'm at because human trafficking made me who I am. I defeated human trafficking, and that's why I'm where I'm at. Yes. But I am successful because I decided to honor a mother that I did not know and a father that I could not see. Anyways. There you go. Mm. Anyways. I honor them anyways. That's power. Whenever I do stuff, I say, I want to thank my mother. My mother did so much crack, I don't want to do crack. Yeah. And yeah. she, you know what I'm saying? I said, well, my mother was was doing crack. I'm cracking books and cracking jokes. What's up? Yeah. You know, I turned everything that was so negative about my life to into something positive. Right. That's right. right. You know, I was like, well, I traded a father. I traded a father that I never met for a father that I could meet. And he died for me on the cross. Yeah. You know, how much more wonderful is that story? See, now I can narrate my own life. I could turn it to whatever it is I want to turn it into. That's right. And that's because I do have a relationship with God. I wish the power that I have, I could teach it to every girl right. that I run into, it, every girl that I meet. That is the hardest thing to teach girls yes. is that you are valuable. And so on my page, even if you follow me, sometimes I don't put it every time, but you'll see me put dear black girl. Yeah. Dear black girl. Because when I'm saying to myself in that specific moment, I'm talking to that eight-year-old child, that nine-year-old girl, right. the 10-year-old, not the haters. I ain't never talking to them. I haters. know. I, know I will right. never address a hater. I don't know that's if I right. have to say it five thousand times. That's I'm right. telling you not. You can say whatever it is you want to say about that's me. That's right. I'm never going to address you. Because, see, it's 
One thing about the turtle and the giraffe, the giraffe has a neck because it's his job to see over things. The turtle's job is to do the same thing from where he's at yes. because right. he can see where he's at. That's right. But as long as I am the giraffe, I can see over everything it is that everybody's doing. Mm -hmm. But the, the minute I yep. start hanging and trooping with turtles yep. and get to reading what's going on, mm -hmm. then you do the same yep. thing turtles do. That's you start right. to move slow. And I can't do it. And because because that's not what God... Yeah, you can't move slow. <laughs> no, you can't you move the turtle, forward. Move but a, turtle, move forward. A, turtle is a turtle is commenting and interjecting based right. on their vision and their perspective. Right, but, but they, they can't they see, see what the giraffe they is seeing. Right. They don't have the capacity to see. Right, turtles don't even have the capacity to look up. They, they got to look straight forward. That's it. That's it. So my whole thing is, it is the drive's responsibility to understand that I'm not going to spend my energy yeah. arguing Argue with you. But if she she laughs because I, said, I call them minimal minded people. <laughs> minimal minded, <laughs> you know. The, the all, they, all they all they're good for is whispering the sweet nothings of negativity into yes. the ears of the people who are trying to get things done. Right. And so when you give them energy, they still can't see what you're seeing. Right. Yeah. But now they feel like they've won because they distracted you. Yeah. You focus on the things you can see because they can't see it. And the and vision I'm is yours. I'm so glad you said that. Success clue number four. And I keep on saying this and I'm going to keep reiterating this because I talk about human trafficking so much, guys, that Satan wants his credit for it. We have got to give God his credit for it. Yes. We have a survivor. We're talking to somebody who survived this. And girls need to go back and listen to this so they can see, ooh, how can I get over it when yeah. they're ready? They might not be ready right now. But somebody might be hearing this and saying, you need to listen to Nisi. You need to hear what she's saying so you can get that, that success because yeah. she's going to tell you what you need to do so, next. when did you know you were ready? Oh, my God. The, three years ago. Three years ago? Three really? years ago, I was ready, not ready. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, if I t how do I tell people that I used to be a hoe? You know, it's like one of those aha moments you yeah. know even in math you got the hoe and the heart and this is so funny yes. though because the hoe <laughs> is actually positive and the high is negative yes. so, <laughs> but for all my uh, people that do math out there yeah. in college yeah. <laughs> but and i'm like okay how how do i help people understand me better so what i did was um i did something what they say if you ever if you want to keep receiving the things you never received before keep doing the things you, you never did done, done, yeah. done. Or, you know or you know vice versa vice versa yeah, yeah. and i said uh i said forget it this is going to run for office <laughs> so i'm going to run for office i said you know why because i see it on the movies all the time where people talk about strippers you know being uh politicians yep and yeah. it's never been done before and i said well you're going to have your first stripper run for office. Why not? <laughs> so I ran the first campaign in Houston against human trafficking um, as, a, as a comedian, mm -hmm. as a survivor of human trafficking, mm -hmm. as a mother of seven children. Mm -hmm. um, I did it. And, and it's on record. The city got me on record. Oh. TV got me on record. <laughs> you know, and they were very nice to me. They asked me how did, they, how did I want my name to be seen. Do do I want uh, certain provisions? Uh -huh. um, I was allowed to not list my address. You know things yeah. like that. They respected okay. what I went through, and and I will give the city and the city attorney they they credit for that for protecting me in that right because I should have been protected. Yeah. And you know what? Everybody that I ran with, I'm sure they might have talked about me behind their back. I didn't hear it. I don't care. It ain't none of my business because I guess know. what? Whatever somebody think about me ain't none of my damn business. You it's your right. job to have your business and it's my job to know what the Lord say about me. Thus says the Lord. Right. Right. So, you know, I, I got to go. I got to be about my father's yeah. business because I'm like Joshua around this piece. Yes. As for me, that's personal. Yes. And this house, oh. that's generational. Yes. We will serve the Lord. So, I love you. Yes. But, um, <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to do it. And when wow. I did it, so many doors opened. So many people was uh, invited me in and was ready to receive me. And my story was acceptable in that place because in that place, politicians are used to leading with a lie and not with the truth. Right. And here it is. I led right. with the truth first mm. and never and never had to tell a lie. Right. And so I'm like, well, shoot, I'm safe. 
And so by the time anybody was like, well, you know this about Nisi? Everybody was like, well, yeah, we've been there. Nisi went through something. She's been telling everybody she's been through something. You ain't know. You know, so. Nobody was listening? Yeah, well, you know, oh, people, okay. yeah, people weren't listening. That's oh, the thing. Okay. You know, they was like, oh, Nisi, you know, did you notice about it? Did you know that about it? Did you? Yeah. And they was like, well, yeah, we already knew you just not catching up. Yeah. Right. You know, okay. We knew about it. She's our baby. She's our sweetheart. She's, she, no. And let her grow. But I have to interject. That's a, it's a tough story to tell, like what you've been through and what I've been through. Mm -hmm. We come from the ghetto. We come from oh yeah. Would say nothing, have a stock nothing. Ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then God has a way of restoring us up to higher than we ever thought we would come. But it, it is still a hard story to tell because you know you gotta kind of like you say block the negativity because there will be negativity. Of course. And you just gotta know that it's gonna help other women. So and that's of what I, and that's what we have to focus on. Nobody cares about kids from the hood. We all know that, right? Well, see, well, what, well, what's Nobody happening cares. is, like I told you this morning, and like I'm sharing with you now, uh, my parting words will be, "It's up to you, right? It's up to you to become the face, to be the voice, right? right. To be the platform, to be the energy, to be the soul that literally through which God speaks, right? You know." You talk about Joshua. That's my dude. Man, that's my man. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, you know, yeah. Caleb, hey, Caleb got a special part in my heart, but Joshua, you know, that's you always had it. We need more men who have the that's ability yeah, to yeah, say, like, ask for me. Yeah, yeah. and that's personal. And my house. I'm also going to talk about the lineage. That's but right. we, we, we need that. But see, the thing is, what you have to understand is we come and see God us. speaks through. Mm -hmm. And you, you become a voice and an energy and a force mm -hmm. by purpose. Mm -hmm. See, it's never by coincidence. It's right. never by accident. Right. It's true. never happenstance. Everything, that every moment, every second, every movement has purpose. Right. And when you start to understand that, you stop feeling like a victim. Right. And you start saying, where is my movement? Where's my movement? So I want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. You know, I'm, I'm on you every day. But, but, <laughs> and he's but, supposed to be. Yes. You know, it's the same with me. I mean, uh, I, I went to a barbershop full of men that, that's like, you know, where men hurt, you know, and so we talk about some things. She said, baby, you were there for almost two hours. What did you do? I said, baby, I didn't say a word. And, her, and she said, you didn't say a word. I said, baby, they didn't ask me to say a word. And all of them were talking. And I wasn't going to compete for the space. I just wanted to sit back and observe. Mm -hmm. I was invited mm -hmm. to come in. And the person that invited me didn't introduce me. So I wasn't just going to go throw myself in. And her response was, so you didn't fill your space? Wow. And it, I mean, and it didn't, and I didn't take it as, you know, the tagline. Right. She said, this is what I expect from you. This is one of the reasons I'm with you. It's because every time you walk into a room, you feel your space. Yes. And so then, because I had already said, I, I really wasn't, you know, I, I really wasn't knowing if I was going back. Well, I got to go back at least once now. Because, yeah. you know, I, I, I yeah, love something saying. undone. Yeah. And so my thing is, feel your space. That's something my grandfather That's talked good. about a long time ago. That's feel good. your space. And when it's all said and done, when you walk away, you leave the legacy. Right. That's why we're talking about Joshua. Mm -hmm. 3,000. 4,000 4, years, years later, yeah. we're talking about Joshua because Joshua filled his space. Yes. Right. And that's all it's about. When you live your purpose, you don't leave here average. Right. When you live your purpose, that's you don't leave right. here mediocre. That's when right. you live your purpose, you leave people a, are talking about you leave what your you prince did. Yeah. 50 years, 100 yes. years, 200 years down yes. the line. Your children's children's children right. have a legacy because you walked their purpose. Yes. Right. I just want to leave you guys with this. Uh, for all my ladies that's trying to come out, that's trying to understand how to come out, mm -hmm. um, in, in, while in prayer with God, because most of them do pray, most yeah. of us do pray. Yeah. Um, stop praying to God, having a conversation with Him, because God don't need information for you. Pray to God to be in agreement with Him about what He says about your life. That's right. And that's you good. will be survived. Amen. Um, I am Missy Hamilton. And I am survived by my husband, Kenneth Hamilton, who is uh, the Lord case Lord of my life. And he covers me. And thank you, baby, for covering me because I could not do this without his sincere protection yes. and dedica dedication. And I love you for that. I will always honor you and respect you. Uh, wow. Give respect to God. Amen. Call me, 713-331-3112. Uh, 
and we'll walk through those steps in case anything happens. I'll post that and I'll post that on all my social media platforms. So if there's somebody that you know, we want you to get this information mm -hmm. to them that um, Nisi can help you get out. And of course, you know, you can always reach out to me, Dr. B. Everybody have my number, my platforms, Dr. B on all, Dr. Bridget on all social media platforms, Bridget Turner Jenkins on my uh, personal page. Please follow me, inbox me. I, I'm getting your messages. We got to continue this talk and we will yes. uh, bring uh, Nisi on when she has a full day and I can have her on here as a guest. We'll bring her on because I'm, I'm getting your questions and I'm going to address it. Dr. Wallace, can you give uh, the audience your contact information? Uh, you can contact me on Facebook at uh, Rick Wallace PhD, or I think it even still pulls up as Bishop. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at, at the Black Voice uh, or Rick Wallace PhD. You can find me on Instagram at Rick Wallace Twenty One, Twitter at Twitter Rick Wallace Twenty One. What's your YouTube channel? YouTube channel is the Black Voice. Come check us out. We're rebuilding over there. They took down a twenty thousand subscriber page. We're starting over from scratch, but we're still moving strong and building. Come over there and check out the work we're doing. We're not just talking about community work. We're also talking about personal development and building each other yes. up individually. Yes, and, and y'all know that's what Dr. B is about. I want to shout out to Cassandra, who's due to be on right now. I have went over in her time. Sis, I apologize for that. I usually get up and get out of here on time. We got deep into the conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, listening. May the Lord watch between me and you. Why are we absent one from another? This we ask in Jesus' name. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I will see you here at the same station, same time. Love you. Bye. Bounce back. Bounce back money. <laughs> <with Dr. P. laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, we got a son waiting at the basketball. Oh, okay. <laughs>「Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.